Welcome to PushMyRepair.com. Today we're going to be going over a Briggs & Stratton 3.5 horsepower engine and showing you how to service and replace the diaphragm in the diaphragm type carburetor. Uh, this carburetor is featured in the 3.5 horsepower models, the Sprint and the Classic, and even some of the older models. And so hopefully after doing this it should get your mower back up and running. So the tools you'll need is a Phillips head screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, a 13mm socket and an 11mm socket. So we start by taking off the air filter, which is just a flathead screw up the top. When we take this off, we want to be careful not to get too much dirt in the carburetor. Okay. And next we get our 13mm socket, and we undo this main centre bolt. Okay, so then we get the 11mm, we just undo this bolt at the front. And then the carburetor should just gently pull off. You want to be careful to not bend this linkage here and to make sure this spring and link all stay. Also be careful not to lose this rubber piece here which connects from the carburetor to this hose as that's an important part that you'll need when you put it back together. Okay, so first you want to check in here and make sure there's no big chunks of anything because that will definitely not help your mower run. And you want to make sure this air filter seal is in place because that helps not create any air leaks in your system. Okay, then we want to check this seal in the front side. Um, you can just pop it out with the screwdriver. First comes a plastic piece that retains the seal, and then the o ring. You can see this one is in pretty good condition, so there's no need to change that. Just sits in there, and the plastic piece just clips in. Okay, then we want to clean the carburetor and surrounding fuel tank so when we remove it to access the diaphragm we don't get too much dirt in it. Okay, you can always wipe down the carburetor with Nifty or anything else you have as well. Um, once you've done that, you just get your Phillips head screwdriver and remove the screws. Just gently lift it up, being careful not to rip the gasket or seal, make sure all the screws are undone. Be mindful petrol will spill. Okay. And so the diaphragm is still connected up here. And we'll look at that in a second. So here's the bottom half of the carburetor which is incorporated in the tank. The main bits to clean is this bit here, and the holes as well, and this main jet hole where the fuel is sucked up. It's important that there's no dirt stuck in the holes or in that main jet, as it can be sucked into the carburetor filters and block them. Okay, now I've cleaned it out, we can put our attention to the top side of the carburetor. So, okay, so on this part we want to make sure here there's no gunge or dirt blocking that and that this fuel filter here, that there's nothing in there. And this one's quite clean, so it all seems good. And then this here is the gasket and diaphragm that comes in almost one combination set. And so the diaphragm has a spring under here and you want to make sure that it's not hard, and that the rubber is still soft, and that when you push it, it springs back up. And that shows that everything is working. Um, if we look at this one, this is an example of the spring that sits underneath. Sometimes this will come off, um, and that's alright, as long as it's still in good condition. But this one's quite well stuck on, so I'm going to leave it there. And this is what they look like, if you take them off. And the signs that one can be damaged is if, you see, this one's a bit split. If it's split like that, but more severely, it usually doesn't function as it should. And if this part here is really hard and doesn't spring back very well, that is also a sign of trouble. So should your gasket be a bit damaged and you need to replace it, all you do is um, you slowly pry it off around each side and it will eventually come loose. You just take it straight off like that. Make sure not to lose the spring. Then you get your new one, just put it back on. Make sure the spring's there and line the holes up. And then you've just got to put the screws in and put it back on the same way you took it off. Okay, and if you're doing this um, and you've found a bit of dirt and maybe you've taken out, hopefully your mower should run back like it used to. 
Another thing to do is to even empty your fuel tank and blow it out or clean it out because any f dirt in your tank is going to suck up into the carburetor and get it dirty again and you don't have to clean it out all the time. But first we'll go, we'll put this one back on. Okay, and then we're going to put it back on the mark. Make sure to put this plastic piece on here and to connect the linkage before we put the tank on. Grab your 13mm bolt. And this 13mm bolt goes directly into a place on the crankcase and so you don't want to do it too tight. So once you thread it, you're in a lot of trouble. So the air filter screw just goes to the top here, sits right down the middle and screws in like that. Don't have to do this one too tight either. And now we'll test it.